Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, I'm just going to do a short take this evening. The nuclear Zap uh, Zaporozhye plant there in Ukraine has become an issue of, uh, well, a lot of different speculations of who's going to create a dirty bomb uh, on that plant there. And uh, I know that J Jack here is talking about the issue there on the Real American Voice there. Uh, he gets this nuclear this power plant uh, in the broadcast that he does here. And and quite frankly, the uh, Intel. the, Intel. the, uh, the, the whole issue the about this is something that we had shared with you guys for some time uh, that you have to kind of watch for it because there's been both sides, both the United States, uh, not so I'm sorry, both the uh, Russian side and the NATO side, uh, where the nuclear power plant there could end up being undermined in order to create a no man's land. Uh, the Russians have, of course, been accusing the West, uh, uh, Ukraine, of shelling this facility, uh, of uh, possibly melting down the facility. In order to create a no man's land, I knew that Intel back months ago, actually probably more than a year ago by now, uh, also had talked about, uh, you know, watch for Russian troops if they were to leave, that Putin would even be willing to melt it down if he thought he was losing the war. But at the same time, there's been so much talk about the West using a, a dirty bomb of some sort there uh, in order to, to maximize the casualties among the Russian troops, etc., uh, and, and, and so quite frankly, no matter which way we go, we can't seem to find out on either side who's going to be really the one that actually does it. Um, I can definitely see uh, Ukraine getting involved in something like that because in their case, they are losing the war. Uh, they're not doing very well. They've, they've suffered heavy losses. But then again, Russia had the Wagner Group come in there that, that really created ca uh, chaos for the uh, Russian military and the gains that they had made uh, that put the Donetsk region at a major risk. So could it be that Putin is willing to allow this thing to melt down to go ahead and create that no man's land so that there could never really be a war between Russia and that of uh, NATO, or at least not being letting that be the battlefield there. So uh, it's hard to say at this point here. But I do think that it's important to know that uh, we are looking at the very real possibility of, uh, of that particular type of a scenario going, going down. Uh, also, uh, uh, Colonel Marcus Reznor of the Australian Armed Forces stated today that they currently believe that the first phase of the Ukrainian offensive has failed to the Ukrainian forces attempting to use NATO military tactics, which do not work against the fortified, heavily mined uh, um, uh, Russian defenses. However, he further stated that Ukraine is now uh, beginning to change tactics and that he expects uh, for there to be limited success along the front line, but no major breakthroughs there. So uh, again, you know, it's really been a failed attempt uh, on Ukraine's side. Uh, although the Germans were involved, uh, in fact, not only were the Germans were involved, but one of the intel's uh, that, that I had received, uh, in fact, just the other day, I thought was very fascinating in this case here, was that um, not only was Germany involved when it come to uh, the situation there in Ukraine, but also uh, that, um, that the Russian secret services knew too, uh, but they were fed up with the generals, uh, with the Russian generals there, and, and they basically were allowing uh, the Wagner Group, or not to tell Putin anything about the Wagner Group, actually uh, Perosian there to actually make those advances against the the uh, uh, the Putin's government there. So that's a really interesting uh, side that I had not heard before, and I wanted to kind of share that with you. Uh, so anyway, just want to do this quick take with you guys this evening. I will be getting uh, back tomorrow. We're going to go back to this whole issue. Uh, that I shared with you the other day when we were talking about Rabbi Ariel Tzedak there, him bringing out that uh, the reptilians are the quote-unquote good guys. And I said I was going to go deeper into that. We'll be sharing that over on uh, uh, Israeli News Live on our um, 
iConnect FX channel there. So you'll get a 30 second clip here. I'm sure you're gonna wanna see that information. I'm gonna go deeper into that. Gonna be looking at different angles though as well because truly we are looking at biblical prophecy uh, manifesting right before our eyes, but I wanna make sure that people are aware of just how serious these things are because um, we're talking about things that just, wow, I don't even know how to put it right now. I really have to think about that and pray about it. So anyway, thank you for your support of the work we do here. We appreciate it. God bless you and have a good evening.